There are so many wonderful products that we're using, but you know the nail brush is probably the most important and personal tool you're going to use when making acrylic nails. So I'm sure you can see the difference in the size of these brushes that I have right here, right? Now this is a 14, that's a 20, this is an eight, this is a 20 and a 14. Let's just take the 20 and the eight. Look at the difference in the sizes. This is a giant brush. This is what I think is a normal size brush. Look at the size of my, let's take the two brushes. I'm just gonna get a 14, a 20, and the eight. Let's just compare those. This is not brand specific. I love these brands. I'm not gonna pick on any brand. So this, if you see a brand, it's nothing about the brand whatsoever. This is all about the size of the brush, the importance of it, and how it can go so wrong. Okay, so here's a 14, here's a 20, and here's an eight. Here's my nail. If your fingernail disappears under the brush, look at that 20, it just covers it completely. If it's disappearing, the brush is too big because you don't want a brush that's bigger than your nail. This can lead to allergies. And why? Because you have way more of a chance of that brush touching the skin all the time. There's a few other things I wanna to touch base on, but that's what you wanna avoid. You don't wanna constantly touch the skin. And I'll show you the diff. So I'm just gonna put this tip on my nail just to protect my nail because I've got my thumb done. So I really don't want to wreck it. So let me just get some product, stick this on here. Okay, I'm just gonna get that little guy out here. Now I'm not making this super neat and tidy. I just wanna get it on here. I just wanna stick this on. So when you're gathering beads, the most important thing when doing acrylic, no matter what size brush you have, honestly, is the liquid powder ratio. So the correct bead, you don't want it running, and you don't want it so dry it falls off. You just want a nice little round bead that's sitting there waiting for you to shape it. You can make a perfect size bead with any size brush, to be quite frank, but you don't need a big brush to get the right size bead. Let's gather a small bead. You get your brush saturated and then you release. This is how we get the right size bead. You release your monomer and then you go gather your bead. You got your perfect little bead. You place your bead, clean your brush, and then you can start shaping. That right there is a perfect size bead because it's sitting there waiting for you. You are in control of your beads. If it's running, it's getting away on you and it's too much monomer. And if you've got too much monomer in there, if you're putting it on natural nail right away, like directly, which is what we do when we're making new sets or nail fills, when you put that monomer wet bead right on that natural nail, you take a chance of increasing your odds of getting allergies because you've got too much monomer in your bead. And also it's a waste of product too because a lot of times we tend to wipe it off. So if you get that right size ratio, just like that, and that's what a nice brush is all about. If we do the same thing for a big brush, actually, I'm not gonna show you with the 20 because that's really big, that's ridiculous. Let's show you with the 14. So this is a 14 size brush and I'm just getting it saturated with the monomer and I've gotta go in and again, you can get the right size bead with any size brush, but it just means you're gonna to have to hold a lot less monomer in that brush. So why bother having a giant brush gathering up all that monomer when you just gotta take all the time to release it? There's really no point in it. So you would saturate it, release, and I gotta release quite a bit. I've gotta get it out of that fluffy brush because I really don't want that size of a bead. So I'm releasing, releasing. I'm gonna go in and get a nice size bead. And we basically did the same size bead. See that? And he's just sitting there waiting, right? But I just had to release a lot more monomer. So if you're watching a video and they're telling you to dip in, release on the side, and sit into the product for whether you bounce, drag, pull, whatever you're doing in there for a certain amount of time, you're gonna gather a lot more bead. You're gonna gather a giant bead if you've got a lot more monomer. You can still do it, but when you get over to the sides of that nail, you do have a much bigger brush taking a chance of hitting that side of your brush. So if you have a smaller brush, look at this. You can get in there a lot easier on that side. Now let's say this is a little example. See that little spot right there? I can get in there with this giant brush. It's gonna be a little harder. 
to really work at getting a lot less monomer to get a bead to go in there. But with a little brush, I can definitely get a little tiny bead, pop it in there, and then work it really close and place it where I want and get very, very close without touching my skin. Whereas this brush, it's going to be quite a bit harder to get in there without touching that skin. And also with a big brush, even though you go to hit the paper towel and drain it a bit, because it's such a big brush, it is holding a lot of monomer in there. And if your brush is down, which our brushes are down, it's draining that monomer constantly into the very end of that brush, constantly with a flow of monomer. And when you are making correct ratio beads, you never want to add monomer to the bead that you've already created because that's gonna mess up the ratio, okay? And it's also gonna make it so wet, and now it's dripping into the cuticles and stuff. Okay, so let's try the, the 20 size, which some are using the 20 size. Let's see, using the big, I mean, look at that brush. I mean, that's, you know what? If, if I was painting a fence, <laughs> I mean, that's exaggerating, of course, but okay, so let's see if I got a little bead. You can get a little bead with it, but working it is gonna be much, much harder, especially if you're learning. You really are setting yourself up if you're using a giant brush like this when you're learning. It, it really is gonna make it a lot tougher for you. Okay, so I'm draining here. I'm draining this brush because I'm trying to make a little baby bead here, a little tiny bead. I gotta make it flattish too because they don't really come to a point, these bigger ones. I'm only gonna use a portion of the tip of this brush because this is way too big for a little bead I'm trying to get in there, okay? So let's say I'm gonna try to put a little bead around here. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna put that bead over here, the same one I just did. I'll put it here, but I'll do it in a different color. So let's try to get a small bead. Okay, like I say, you can get any size bead you want with any size brush. It's just much more difficult with the big one. So release all the monomer. And I'm just gonna go in there and get a little tiny bead. Oh, that's a bit bigger than I want. <laughs> Okay, I gotta release more monomer. Okay, and we're gonna gather a little tiny bead. That's better. Okay, so we're gonna put it in that same spot. It's still a bit bigger than I wanted, but that'll work. And now I'm going to, I gotta turn the finger like that, which we do sometimes. Let's see if I can go up in here. So you can see, I can get it in there. It's probably more my skills than anything. But if you're learning, this is gonna be a tough one. Touching the skin is what we wanna to try to avoid as much as possible. So you're only able to use the very, very tip of that and it just makes it much, much harder. But remember when I use the little brush, see you can actually see what you're doing and get into the tiniest little areas. This is much, much more effective than that big brush. So you can do it with the big brush, it's just gonna be harder to do. So I really, really strongly advise you get an eight. You can go as low as a six, get an eight, but don't go bigger than a 10. A 10's pretty good too. But when you get into the 12, 14, they're really getting unnecessarily big. And I believe in the 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, mm, unless I'm painting a picture, <laughs> I don't really need that big brush. Also remember, the bigger the brush, the more monomer it holds and more chances you take of the monomer leaching into the natural nail plate, leading to allergies. Overexposure is something we really, really want to avoid. Also, a bigger brush takes more chances of hitting the person's skin. Nails are small. We really do need a small brush to get into those detailed areas. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.